Day 113 is the first day of her second year. It begins with a visit from Kent, who has just arrived back in Pelican Town. I meet Lewis at the old community garden in the east of town. He says we can use this garden to grow crops. This was very kind of him. I will admit, however, that I completely forgot about this and didn't go back here for the rest of spring. My bad. I buy 400 Deluxe Speed Grow and 400 Mixed Seeds and Piers, then I visit Robin and add the two extra rooms to our house. I also buy 20 kegs. I return to Piers to buy some grass starter. We're mainly going to be focusing on the layout of our farm this month, so I'll be using this grass to decorate it. I head back to the farm and plant our mixed seeds. On day 114, we have a conversation with Andy outside the abandoned farmhouse. It turns out it used to belong to two friends of his. I collect their wines and jams from the greenhouse and pick up the starfruit seeds I left there. I sell the wine and jam to Pierre and buy some iridium sprinklers, scarecrows, deluxe speed grow and mixed seeds from Pierre. As is tradition, I purchase 20 kegs from Robin. Then I collect my iridium trash can from Clint. We're a bit late, but we have finally, officially, fully upgraded all of our tools. I make my way to Ginger Island and spend the day clearing out all of the wood, stone and weeds and plant our seeds. Day 115 is a big collection day. I really need to pick up our cheese and mayo more often. And I need to keep all of these machines working more frequently too. I want to have the most efficient farm that anybody has ever seen by the end of the second year. I ask Robin to upgrade her shed, then I head to Ginger Island where I spend the rest of the day in the Volcano Dungeon. I want to unlock Mr. Key's Walnut Room this month, so we're going to be spending a good bit of time on Ginger Island. I'm pretty sure I mentioned previously that I was going to refer to Mr. Key as Mr. Blue. I've changed my mind on that. Uh, it's, it's Mr. Key, it's not Mr. Blue anymore. Day 116 is a small harvest day as various crops have grown. The only reason I'm pointing this out is because I basically ignore the crops that are growing on this farm during spring. I don't know why I did that to be honest. But our greenhouse is a different story altogether. Our Georgia berries are ready for harvest and a few Georgia berry jams are also ready for collection. I purchase even more deluxe speed grow and mixed seeds and peers and I think you know the drill by now. I'm not going to specifically mention me buying deluxe speed grow or mixed seeds anymore. It's off to Ginger Island once again to clear out some more space for the planting of more seeds. Wheat and garlic have appeared from mixed seeds, so I make sure to plant the melon seeds so we can get 15 golden walnuts in the future. On day 117, I make 33 kegs, which brings us up to a total of 53 thanks to the 20 I had in the chest beside my house. I've definitely got more kegs in different chests, but I just don't know where they are. I buy another 20 kegs from Robin, giving us a total of 73. I also buy 150 oak resin, 30 copper bars, and 20 iron bars. We now have 114 kegs. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I'm going to be honest, I completely forget if I said I won't talk about harvesting the ancient fruit and Georgia berries in Grandpa's shed anymore. I've said I won't mention certain things so many times that I've lost track of what I'm not allowed to talk about anymore. I get to work on placing the kegs inside her shed. I completely messed up the layout the first time I put them down, so I had to do it again. This looks much better, but I don't have enough kegs to fill up the entire shed. I fill these kegs with ancient fruit and Georgia berries before the day ends. On day 118, I decide it's time to complete the museum collection. I collect the artifacts I kept in my chest, donate them, and nothing happens. I'm missing something. Alright, well, I suppose this was bound to happen. Nothing can ever be easy, huh? It took me about a minute, but I realized we don't have a prismatic shard in our museum collection. I collect one from my storage shed and donate it to the museum. Once again, nothing happens. Of course. I'm going to do some detective work and see if I can figure out what I'm missing. I collect a jade from a crystallarium and I realize that this is what we haven't donated to the museum. That does make a lot of sense though. I kept my first jade so I could put it in the crystallarium, then I kept any more jades I found so I could trade them in for staircases. On day 119, I donate the jade and finally complete the museum collection. I receive a star drop for doing so. I believe we only need two more star drops now. One for catching all of the fish, and another for getting somebody to 12 and a half hearts. So we either need to marry someone or ask someone to be our roommate. I will sort that out at a later date. Not right now, I'm not ready for that. 
I purchased a stamina capsule and a sports drink from Harvey because we need to throw these into our shipping bin as part of the shipping collection. Then it's off to Ginger Island where I find a mummified frog in the forest. The rest of the day is spent here collecting golden walnuts and golden coconuts. I head to Robins on day 120 to buy some wood and fiber and ask her to build another shed for us. I ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut and we receive a golden walnut. I buy some copper ore and use it along with the wood and fiber we have to make 5 flute blocks. I fish up a golden walnut and use our 20 golden walnuts to unlock the island resort. I then collect one golden walnut, then another, then a third walnut to the east of the island resort. I collect the fourth walnut by fishing and I catch a stingray. I meet Birdie so I can start a quest. Except I'm not going to start it today, no I have very important business to tend to. I head to the pirate cove and play a game of darts three times to receive another three golden walnuts. Just a heads up, I say golden walnuts a lot during spring. Like, I got to the point where the words golden walnut lost all meaning for me. On day 121, I am very happy to announce that we do indeed have a wheat, a garlic and a melon growing on our farm. In fact, they're not just growing, they're fully grown. This means we can talk to the frog in the cave and show him these three crops. I do this and receive 15 golden walnuts for my troubles. I give Kent the war memento to start Birdie's quest. I drop by our farm to collect the bomb, then I buy some cooking products and the wallpaper catalogue from Pierre. I give the gourmet tomato salt to Gus, give the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy, give the advanced TV remote to George, give the Arctic Shard to the wizard and give a Wrigley Worm to Willy. Willy gives us the pirate's locket. Now all we have to do is give this item to Birdie. I head to Willy's shop so I can go to Ginger Island, but it's closed. It takes so much effort to produce a smile these days. I am in tremendous need of some dopamine, so on day 122 I ask Robin to upgrade her shed. Just in case anybody is curious, I'm still making sure I give gifts to the villagers as often as I can. I really want to stay on top of our friendships to make sure we get everyone to maximum hearts by the end of winter. I use our 5 flute blocks to complete a puzzle and earn 5 golden walnuts. Our star fruit are ready for harvest which helps us earn another 4 or 5 golden walnuts. I'm not sure exactly how many it was, I'm, I'm starting to lose my mind a bit when it comes to these walnuts honestly. If I'm being completely transparent, I hate having to collect all 130 golden walnuts. It's, it's absolutely the worst part of achieving perfection for me. It's not like extremely difficult or anything like that, there's just so many small things you need to do to get them all. Anyway, rant over, let's get back to business. We have collected 82 golden walnuts so far, which is good. I've spent so much time focusing on them during the last few days that I would have been incredibly upset if we had less than 70. A bird drops an emerald in the forest. This is perfect. It makes it slightly easier to guess where the remaining gems go on the remaining podiums that are part of this puzzle. I talked about this during the 100 days of Stardew Valley video I made recently, but normally you're supposed to collect these gems from birds in 4 different areas on the island. But I'm a bit impatient, so I just guess where the gems go. This pays off as we receive 5 golden walnuts. I open up the dig site, break open the bone nodes, do some panning and free Professor Snail from the cave he's trapped in. I collect some golden walnuts, then I correctly answer the 2 survey questions in the island field office to receive 2 golden walnuts. I donate the artifacts I have and I receive another two golden walnut. I'm losing my mind with how much I've said golden walnut. I, I make a quick stop in the volcano dungeon where I collect another two, you know, like, you get the point. It's raining on day 123, which means Birdie isn't outside so we can't talk to her and complete her quest. That's fine. Everything is fine. I play the Simon Says game to receive another three golden walnuts. I quickly unlock the island's fast travel system, then I make my way to Mr. Key's walnut room. We have finally collected 100 walnuts, giving us access to the room. Alright, this is good, I needed a pick-me-up after the kerfuffle that occurred this morning. The two special orders available to us are disgusting. Seriously, I would have taken anything else over these two. I decide to accept the order to find key beans and use them to grow and ship 500 key fruit. I decide to check how much progress we've made. 38%. You know what, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right now though. By the time winter is over, we'll be at 80% minimum. I spend the rest of the day fishing for golden walnuts. 
Any time I hook a fish, I immediately cancel it. To be quite honest, I don't know if I've already collected all five walnuts you can get from fishing. What I do know is I didn't get a single walnut from doing this, so it was kind of a waste of time. I collect a golden walnut on the morning of day 124, then I collect another one. I return to Pelican Town and enter our new shed. It's empty right now, but we're going to fill this bad boy with kegs as soon as we can. Our ancient fruit and Georgia Berry wine is ready in our first shed though, so that is absolutely sterling. The kegs and preserve jars in Grandpa's shed are also full of wine and jam, so today is a very good day. Our starfruit is also ready for harvest, and I was genuinely ready to cry at this point. That's how emotional I was. We received 400,000 gold from our wine and jam. That's actually quite a bit more than I was expecting. Things are looking good for us. The egg festival takes place on day 125. I'm going to be honest, I was not feeling it, so I went to sleep instead. It's time to visit Robin again on day 126, so I can buy four stacks of wood. I only just realized this cost me 200,000 gold. Was it worth it? Absolutely not, but I'm going to lie to myself and say it was worth it so I can feel just a tiny bit better about my spending habits. I purchase another 100 oak resin, giving us a total of 209. I ask Robin to build another shed for us, then it's off to Clint's to continue our shopping spree. I buy copper and iron bars, copper and iron ore, and coal. Then it's off to Ginger Island to complete Birdie's quest, except it's raining again, yeah, that's just typical. The rest of the day is spent smelting iron and copper ore. I believe it is time to let the cat out of the bag, as they say. The whole point of today was to get everything we need to make a ton of kegs. I fill the remaining spots in our keg shed and fill them all up with Georgia berries. I also get started on filling our second keg shed while I wait for the iron and copper ores to smelt in our furnaces. I also reorganized this shed to make it look a lot more like our keg sheds in terms of the layout. I end up making 58 kegs, then I throw our artisan goods into the shipping bin. If you pay close attention, you will notice I threw our oak resin into the shipping bin. I did not mean to do that. On day 127, I make some good progress on our second keg shed. And that's all I did today. On day 128, I have officially given up on trying to complete Mr. Key's special order to grow and ship 500 key fruit. All of the space in our two greenhouses and on our Ginger Island farm is taken up by different crops, so there's basically no way I can get that special order done. I throw some Georgia berries into our kegs, and then I throw some Georgia berries into our seed makers. I take a bit of a creative risk and plant more Georgia berry seeds in this greenhouse. I say creative risk because I can almost guarantee that I'm going to plant these incorrectly and not be able to harvest some of them. I buy ancient seeds and pears, throw Georgia berries into our kegs, and plant the ancient seeds. Day 129 is when I realize I threw over 100 oak resin into our shipping bin a few days ago. This hurt. Like this, this really, really hurt. A routine trip to Robins takes place next where I of course purchase kegs and ask her to upgrade her shed. Except I don't have enough gold. I'm upset. On Ginger Island, I receive a golden walnut when I break a muscle node, so that was like a good raindrop falling in a puddle of bad news. Basically what I'm saying is today isn't a good day. I do give the pirate's locket to Birdie and complete her quest, though. At this point, I decide to go all in on collecting golden walnuts. I'm not trying to collect all 130 of them, I just want to get to around 115 at the very least. We've got 109, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Except for the fact that it's me. I mean, if you've seen my other videos, you probably know that I can struggle with the most basic things at times. Let me put it this way. If fumbling was an Olympic sport, I would be a 10-time gold medal winner. So, with all of that being said, the rest of day 129, as well as days 130, 131, 132, and 133 are spent fishing... Harvesting our star fruit, breaking bone nodes, digging up artifact spots, panning, donating any artifacts I find, talking to Lance, and going through the volcano dungeon. Day 134 is an ancient fruit harvest day. You'll notice the golden coconuts in our inventory. I'm hoping we get a fossilized skull from one of them when we ask Clint to crack them open. That artifact and one snake vertebrae is all I need to finish off the field office donations. 
I also got a golden walnut from a muscle node, so that was nice. I head to Clint's and he's not there. I, I honestly, at this point, honestly, I think Clint has a problem with me. This, this is a recurring thing, alright? This has happened in every single playthrough. Like, I'll go to Clint's because I have something important to do and he's just not there. Like, why does he hate me? Anyway, our keg shed is full of wine, so that is absolutely sensational. I fill these kegs up with ancient fruit and some star fruit. Our second keg shed is also full of wine. Is it just me or has pretty much every day during spring so far been full of ups and downs? I don't think we've had a day that was all good or all bad. It's like the Stardew Valley universe can't decide whether I have bad luck or good luck, so it gives me both at the same time. Any whomst, I collect some artisan goods from our sort of miscellaneous machines shed, that was a tongue twister for me, and throw everything into our shipping bin. We earn almost 500,000 gold from this. Sweet. I head to Clint's on day 135 and purchase iron and copper ore and copper and iron bars. I had just made it back to the farm when I realized I forgot to ask him to crack open our golden coconuts. So I head back to Clint's and do exactly that. The good news is we received the fossilized skull. The bad news is we received two of them and a key bean. I only needed one of these three items. Like I said, good luck and bad luck at the same time. It's off to Ginger Island to donate the skull for which we receive six golden walnuts and a banana tree sapling. I plant the sapling, then I begin the process of smelting our iron and copper ores. While the furnaces are working away, I begin clearing out the chests beside my house and putting everything into our storage shed. On day 136, I change the wallpaper and flooring in our storage shed. There's a glitch where the wallpaper and flooring of one shed will be transferred to another shed, and that is exactly what happened here. But I think it looks nice, so I'll leave it like that. One of the benefits of moving everything into the storage shed was I found 40 kegs I bought last year. I collect our ancient fruit and Georgia berries from a chest, place the 40 kegs into our second keg shed and fill them all up. I give Lance a golden pumpkin and I believe he is at two hearts now, which is good. This should unlock a cutscene with Marlon really soon. I head to the flower dance. Last year I basically had to choose between Olivia and Sophia. I chose Olivia. This time I decide to dance with Sophia because I still have not forgotten about the bottle of aged Blue Moon wine she gave us last year. I'm a very sentimental person, what can I say? Marlon pays us a visit on day 137. He wants us to come to the Adventures Guild when we get the chance. I immediately head there and it's locked. That's a bit rude, honestly, like he knew we were coming here and he decided to lock the door. Alright, I see how it is. I collect some wine from Grandpa's shed, and listen, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I'm not going to mention collecting wine or harvesting crops or anything like that anymore. So if you see my bank account increase by like 400,000 gold, you can just assume I sold a ton of wine or Georgia berries. In the same vein, if it looks like I have spent a ton of money, it was probably for the sake of making a ton of kegs. I return to the Adventurers Guild where Marlin says we can use his boat to travel to the Highlands, but first we need to give him various monster items. Slime, bat wings, solar essence, things like that. I ask Robin to upgrade our third shed, then I give Marlin the items he requested. Now I don't know about you, but I feel like we need a big moment to happen during spring. Something unexpected, something beautiful. So, Sophia has been given the bouquet. I mean, look, realistically, it was always going to be her. She has the best backstory out of any villager in Stardew Valley Expanded. In my opinion, of course. So, she wasn't just an option, she was the solution. Side note, I was listening to When the Night is Over by Lord Huron when I gave her the bouquet, so I, I got a bit emotional here, I, I won't lie to you. Marlon pays us a visit on day 138 to let us know we can now use his boat. I suspect we may be on the cusp of another big moment here. I head straight to the Adventurers Guild where Marlin says we'll be going to the Highlands. The Highlands is where Lance lives. I wanted to show this part of the cutscene because it's kind of beautiful. The river, the cliffs, the trees, I love that stuff. We... We are... I don't know why I said it like that. We arrive at our destination and waterfalls are floating in the air for some reason. We meet Lance and uh, yeah, I, I don't think those waterfalls are supposed to be there. Unless Lance has somehow managed to find decorative waterfalls that can float in the air, which 
I mean, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually the case. He even has these waterfalls in his house, so yeah, maybe. But no, they're definitely just a graphical glitch. When the cutscene ends, we are teleported back to the Adventurers Guild. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is not where I want to be. I immediately head back to the Highlands and talk to Lance. He says that there are monsters here that will drop seeds for special crops. Lance would like us to give him the four crops these seeds produce. So I spend the rest of the day defeating monsters here so I can get those seeds. On day 139, we can send something west of Cindersap Forest. About time, I've been waiting for this since last spring. I collect all of my starfruit and head to the abandoned farmhouse where I find a Junimo scroll. I bump into the wizard a few moments later who says he can sense intense magic surrounding us. It turns out we have a Junimo scroll in our pocket. The wizard wants us to go to his tower so he can take a look at it. He can't understand it though, so he asks someone to visit us. Kamala arrives. Not going to lie, I was hoping it would be Alicia. But this is our first time meeting Kamala, so this is pretty cool. The wizard mentioned her when we met him in the forest last year. She protects an area called Castle Village. She is also in charge of the biggest magical barrier in the world. This barrier is used to keep monsters away from the citizens of Castle Village. So basically, she is the coolest person we have met so far. I return to the abandoned farmhouse and donate 200 starfruit, then it's off to Ginger Island to harvest all of the crops and start planting starfruit and Georgia berry seeds. On day 140, I would like to say something really quick. Regarding the crops Lance wants us to give him, we already have three of them thanks to our mixed seeds. Yeah, it turns out mixed seeds uh, produce these crops. We've got the slimeberry, the void fruit, and the monster fruit. All we need is the monster mushroom and I've got the seed for it planted. So Lance will get his four crops pretty soon. I finish off planting as many Georgia berry and starfruit seeds as I can. I definitely said I won't mention planting seeds anymore, didn't I? Did I? I, I don't remember at this point. I've said... I won't say it. I, I probably will. I, I actually, I will say it again. You know the vibes. That's, how, that's what I do. I just forget things. I don't know what I'm saying. And let's just move on. I buy cooking recipes from Gus at the Island Resort. Just before the day ends, I head to the Highlands and give the three crops we have to Lance. So spring was, uh, I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest. I, I feel like ups and downs doesn't even begin to describe it. It was, it was just a weird season. Uh, yeah, I will see you all in summer.